Yeah, we welcome you as we do these fam these family Bible studies. And there's times that we're going to do an extra one because my family hears stuff, and I want to make sure they know what the Bible says. So take part uh, to learn. But I'm not going to mention no names. I'm not going to mention nothing. We're just going to say what God does know, he knows it all. Now look at three aspects of God is omnipotent. That may be saying these words wrong. Is God is ability to do what he wills to do, and it's holy all the time. Omnipresent is God being everywhere. He fills all. Omniscience. It's perfectly and eternally knows all things. Now, for someone to say that God does not know everything, he's violating the fact that, that there is a word that says omniscient, it's that God does know everything. So let's look at some scriptures here. Psalms 147.5. Let's see what the Bible has to say about God. Does he know everything? And there's only one thing I'm going to say this whole study. There's one thing that God cannot know. And that's our sins that are under the blood. In Psalms 147 verse 5. And this is scripture with scripture. We've heard someone say that God does not know everything. In verse 5 of chapter 147. Great is our Lord. And of great power. His understanding is infinite. It's forever and ever. It's perfect. He is our God. He's our great God. And there is no limitations on what his understanding is. In Proverbs 15.11. I mean, I think that would say it right there. I mean, I think we could close the chapter right there. And say we're done. 1511 of Proverbs. Why would somebody limit God? When Psalms 147.5 didn't limit God. And we've moved to Proverbs 15 verse 11. And I want my family to know that. What was said is wrong. And what the Bible says is correct. That's my job. And I guarantee you, if I heard somebody say it. I guarantee he's been out there in pulpits. In Psalms 15, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, but Psalms 15, verse 11. Hell and destruction are before the Lord. How much more than the hearts of the children of men? God knows the hearts of men. God knows what they are thinking. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. He knows what you're thinking. He has the ability to see what you're thinking. He knows what hell is, and he knows what the destruction of the people that go into hell. God knows all about men. And that's very important. Isaiah 46.10. Isaiah 46.10. Psalm is the wisest man ever that God gave wisdom to, making that statement. Isaiah, a prophet of God to a nation that is God's nation that's rejecting him. That God sent Isaiah that will you get right. Isaiah 46.10. Declaring the end from the beginning. Now, no psychic can do that. No one that puts aside palm reading. God has written the book of Revelation. The end. And yet he knew the book of Revelation from the beginning of the creation. Even before that. All along Jesus Christ knew he was going to suffer and die upon Calvary. He knew exactly what they would do to him. They knew exactly who would come to him and who would reject him. He knows exactly what the Antichrist is going. If he has no power, and if he does not know anything, he could not write to us the book of Revelation and Thessalonians about the man called the Antichrist. And we're not done. 
declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times of things that are not yet done. Prophecy. Our God knows prophecy. I am told there are 48 prophecies about the first advent of Jesus Christ and all 48, whatever the number is, 49, 50, I don't know. Every single first advent prophecy of Jesus Christ has come to pass 100% and God knew that and put it in the Bible and had men from Moses all the way to Malachi right, knowing what would happen before it happened. Knowing who would reject him. Knowing that Pilate would say, I find no fault in him. I find no fault in him. I find no fault. Crucify him. Knowing that Judas would do three and a half years probably ministry, some amount of time with Jesus, walking with Jesus, learning with Jesus, teaching with Jesus, doing the miracles, doing the healings, rebuking the, 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 uh, the devils. And that knowing that Judas would sell him out. And even at the table, proclaimed it would be Judas and no one else knew. That's prophecy. Our God's a God of prophecy, knowing. Saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure and that's the omnipotence. That's God will do everything in his will and everything he does is holy and right. Because he knows what is holy and right. And a bunch of scriptures now we're going to look at here. 1 John 3.20. We're going to look at these scriptures and just comment on them. 1 John 3.20. Now I put these in order. Kind of order. 1 John 3.20. Now watch this verse. The statement was made that God does not know all things. With this verse right here, we can go bye-bye and, and close up. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart. Remember we read about the heart? He knew about the heart of man. And knoweth, knoweth, knoweth all things. So that scripture, so that saying that God doesn't know everything has just violated the scriptures. There's a Bible verse. Romans 11.33. Romans 11.33. We have a remarkable guy, and I'm glad I got a God that knows. He knows what, what the bad things are. He knows what the good things are. He knows what's right for me, and he knows what's wrong for me. And he knows what will happen with the wrong. As he knows what will the good do if I do the good. He knows the favor, and he knows the destruction we've already read. So Romans 11.33 all the death of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. You can't pay for God's knowledge. How unsearchable are his judgments. And his ways are past finding out. That sounds like somebody who knows a lot. For who has known the mind of the Lord? And who has been his counselor? Who has guided God? Who has been his, his teacher? Or who has first given to him God and shall be recomp recompensed unto him again? For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. He is the only one that can ever say he knows it all. And I don't even know when we get to heaven, get the new bodies and walk in the streets of truth. I don't even know if we are going to know it all. I don't have scripture about us in a new body before Jesus Christ. 
I know we're going to spend eternity praising the Lord Jesus Christ, but is he going to use that eternity to use his knowledge to explain to us and make the Bible more real? Wouldn't it be great if we sat in the streets of Jerusalem, the street of Jerusalem, when John the Baptist will tell us the entire story of his life that was not even recorded in the Bible? Because John said, if we were to write everything that happened to Jesus, the world couldn't contain the books. What if we had an eternal, lifelong lesson about Jesus Christ and the things that we don't know about Jesus Christ? Everybody's worried about what did Jesus do as a baby? What did Jesus do as a young man? Maybe he'll tell us that one day. We'll move on. Hebrews 4.13. Hebrews 4.13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. Everything that God has made is in God's sight. God can see atoms. If there is a thing called DNA, God can see it. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. God knows it all. He knows everything about animals he knows everything about humans he knows everything about amoebas he knows everything about if there were dinosaurs he knows everything about trees everything about grass he knows it all and all that stands before god and god knows you realize what they teach us in science class may be opposition to what god says it really is no man can explain gravity they don't understand it. I guarantee you God knows what gravity is. 1 Corinthians 2.10 1 Corinthians 2.10 First Corinthians 2.10 but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. Oh, I got some knowledge of God. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man, which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. There are men who are unsaved, don't know God, will not believe in God, and they don't know nothing about God. I have believed on Jesus Christ. I am saved. I know about the virgin birth. I know about the entombment three days and three nights. I know what some of the things Jesus Christ done on this earth, though it happened how many years ago? I know where I'm going when I die. I know one day if I were to die and the Lord tarry for the rapture, I know one day absent from the body and present with the Lord. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know how long it takes. God does. Mary had no idea when Jesus said, don't touch me, I have not sent to the Father. And then boom, he goes up and comes back down and the disciples say, he knew what happened. Those, those men that walk into him and me, is, they had no idea who he was. He did. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 24. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knoweth the hearts of all men, all men, saved or lost. See, God is not restricted because you're a sinner. Oh, I can't see that. God, Jesus, God said, if a man looketh upon a woman to lust after in his heart, he's already committed adultery. God knew that. He knows the name and he knows where and when that person committed that sin and records it. God does know. Because we're going to look at the, we're going to look at a couple of examples that were mentioned. Not right now, Matthew 10 30. 
Matthew 10 30. Oh, yeah. How about this one? But the very hairs on your head are all numbered. How's that for now? How many men have ever been on this planet, and God knows how many hair, and when you lose your hairs, and when you comb your hair? Would you even like to take a guess how many hairs you have? Remember, the Bible says that he knows every sparrow. He, is, he feeds every sparrow. He knows the death of every sparrow. And he knows how much the sparrows cost. Jesus in his life ministry knew if I go this direction, there would be a man who is blind. There's a man who is lame. There's a man who's possessed by devils. There's a woman that needs me. There are people who are seeking me. If I turn down this road and the disciples say, why are we going this way? Because I know. And the disciples had no idea. They got in that ship. There's a storm amongst the sea. Lord, we're perish, we perish. No, we're not. I told you we're going the other side. And when we get to the other side, there's a maniac in Kadira. He needs to be saved. He's going to get saved. And they're going to have a bunch of hogs who are going to commit hogicide. And the people are going to get set. And they're going to tell me to leave. And that man's going to go home and tell people about Jesus. That's why we're crossing this lake, this sea. You tell me that that universe, that wonderful, colorful universe, the colorful fish that are in the ocean that man cannot see, is by a God that doesn't know anything. I don't believe it. Now, let's look at some Old Testament. Isaiah 40, 28. That's New Testament. Isaiah 40, 28. Isaiah 40, 28. Again, this is Isaiah, man of God, writing for God, the inspiration, King James Bible. Isaiah 40, 28. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of, uh, of the ends of the earth, faint is not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. He knows how to lift people up. He knows how to get people going. He knows how to strengthen people. He knows how to create the entire whatever there is to be here. Jeremiah 1 5. Jeremiah 1 5. I wouldn't limit God. Watch this one. You talk about abortion. Jeremiah 1 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Jeremiah has just been conceived. And God knows what Jeremiah will do and what he do and who Jeremiah will be. I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee. I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. While we were yet in our mother's womb, God knew everything about us. As he will know Pharaoh. We'll see that in a moment. God knew what Pharaoh would do. That is foreknowledge. Write that down. Get it down. Foreknowledge. God already sees what has happened already. Yet before it happens, we already seen the scriptures. God is so knowing. He knows what's going to happen before it happens without a crystal ball. Jeremiah 23, 24. Jeremiah 23, 24.
Jeremiah 23, 24. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? You can't hide from God. He knows exactly where you are. God knows where every man is. We saw in the book of Acts, save the Lord, all men. He knows everything about their heart. He knows wherever they all are. I grew up with a man called Jimmy Hoffa. No one knows where he is. God does. Amelia uh, Earnhardt got in that airplane. Nobody knows where she is. God does. God knows exactly what happened to her. God knows where, where she, where, whatever, if she lived, whatever happened to her. God knows. You cannot have such a program as witness protection program in the United States government to protect you from people. God knows where you are. God knows who you are. No matter if you move your place and change your name, God still knows who you are. That's a lot of knowledge. Psalms 147. Psalms 147.4. Psalms 147.4. We're not going to go through all of these. I think we got the idea already. This one, Psalms 147, verse 4. Now this one's remarkable. Psalms 147, verse 4. He tells the number of the stars. He said, Abraham, your sea shall be as the numbers of the stars of heaven as the sand and the sea. No one can count those stars. God does. God knows how many stars there are and they fall. God knows. Watch this. Not only that. Verse 7. 47.4 He calls them all by their name. Even I can't even remember names. All those stars you see up there, the clusters of stars, that they bring back these photos and there's this cluster and cluster of clusters of stars. God has names for all of them. And he knows how many there are. Uh, 1 Chronicles 28.9. Let's see what this one is. 1 Chronicles 28.9. We'll look at some examples. Psalms, I mean, First Chronicles 28, 9. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy fathers, and serve him with a perfect heart, with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts, all hearts, and understands all the imaginations of the thoughts. We're going to see that in a minute. God knows what you're thinking. God knows what everybody's thinking. That song about Santa Claus is not about Santa Claus. It's about God. He knows when you're sleeping. He knows you're awake. He knows you've been bad or you've been good for God's sake. Or wickedness sake. Saved or lost men. Now let's go to Genesis 18, 16. And this was one of the things that rose up. Genesis 18, 16, and let's do a Bible study. Genesis 18, verse 16. Let's quote the Bible. Genesis 18, 16. And the men rose up from there, thence, and looked toward Solomon. Abraham went with them. To bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I will do, which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, God knew that, and they are a great and mighty nation. God knew that. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. He knew that all the nations through Jesus Christ, which will be of Abraham, will be blessed. He knew that. Watch this, for 19. For I know him. God knew Abraham. As much as God knows the lost man. That he will command his children. That's the first time command shows up. 
He will command his children and his household after him. God says, Abraham, I know what kind of father he's going to be. I know what kind of husband he's going to be. I know what kind of employer he's going to be. I know what kind of uh, in charge of servants he's going to be. Don't you think God's a God that knows things? He knows about you and shall keep the way of the Lord. I know Abraham's going to follow me. To do justice and judgment. And the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. And the Lord said, okay, here's the problem. Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they see whether they yeah, see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which has come unto me, and if not, I will know. All right, God says, listen, I've heard about the cry of Son of Gomorrah. Okay? I'm going to go down and I'm going to check it out. But look at, there are three men. Chapter 19, verse 1. And there came two angels and saw them at even. God didn't go. And we know those two angels, two men. God sent two angels and said, listen, go in there and tell me what's going on. God already knows. God knows the hearts. We've seen the hearts of the of the wicked and the hearts of the saved, the hearts of those who don't believe and those the heart of the, that they do believe. We've already seen it. He knows what's going on in Sodom. He knows what's going on in Gloria, uh, Gomorrah. So I will go down except he sends the two men, the angels. God had perfect knowledge without having to enter Sodom. And those men are going to try to have their ways with those men. Will only prove the fact is they are wicked. They are vile. God put them to test as much as he put Abraham to test with his son on Mount Moriah. I want to see. He knows by the foreknowledge Pharaoh, Exodus 3, 19. He knew Pharaoh would not believe God. He knew that Pharaoh would not turn his heart to Moses, to God. So he used, by the foreknowledge, he used Pharaoh to do what needed to be done. As I say with Judas, John chapter 6, verse 64. He knew Judas would be able and willing to sell him out, so he used it. Now, he never forced Pharaoh. He never forced Judas. They did it of their own account, and yet Judas was warned, and Pharaoh was warned. And with those warnings, by the foreknowledge of God, they still done what they wanted to do. They still were able to sin, or they could have got right. They did it, and God, knowing that and not forcing them, says, okay, I know what you're going to do already, so I'm going to set forth the path and use what you're going to do. But you have a free will. You can, or you may not. But I know if you're going to, or I know you're not going to. I will use that. People don't understand that. Genesis 11. Genesis 11. Verse 4. Ooh, there's another one. Genesis 11, 4. Oh, I'm in 12. Say, that didn't look right. Genesis 11, 4. And they said, go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad through upon the face of the earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, behold, the people are one. And we don't need to go anywhere else. All right, so that was raised the question. If God knew these people were going to do all this, why did he allow it to happen? He must not know. When the book of Acts says he knows lost men, he knows saved men, he knows all men. When the Bible says he knows all things, we've read the scripture. Now, when the Lord came down, it would probably be assumed the fact is it is the angel of the Lord that came down and not God himself. It says to see. The Lord came down to see the city. It would be an inspection, 
a first-hand account of what's going on, like a first-hand inspection of Sodom. Is it really as bad as I heard it is? Are they really building this thing as much as they are? I'm going to inspect it. It's the evidence before judgment. I will destroy Nineveh, but I will send a prophet into Nineveh and preach to the Ninevites, which they got right, and God spared the judgment. So it's a first-hand inspection in Genesis 11. God knows from heaven what they're doing in Genesis 11. And again, like I said, it would probably be the angel of the Lord. Because if God himself were to come down, it nothing happened what would happen when God came down. Let me show you by example. Exodus 19.20. If that was God himself upon wicked sinners, Exodus 19.20. Exodus 19.20. In Exodus 19.20, the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount. And the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount. And Moses went up. Now you remember this point. The mountain is smoking. The mountain is on fire. Verse 16, the same chapter. It came to pass on the third day of the morning that there were thunders and lightning, a thick cloud upon the mount. And the voice of a trumpet. See, that did not happen in where the tower in the city was. That did not happen in Sodom and Gomorrah. God sent the two angels. He stayed with Abraham. God probably sent the, the, the angel of the Lord into Babel. Check it out for me, son. Because if God were to come down, he told Moses, Hey, listen, if, I, if you're going to see my face, you're not going to live. Numbers 11, 25. Numbers 11.25. We're going somewhere with this. Why did God come and see Sodom? Which he didn't. He sent the two angels. Why did God come down and see that, that city and that tower? Which he didn't. He probably sent the angel, uh, the angel of the Lord. In Numbers 11.25. If God came down. And the Lord came down. In a cloud and spank unto him, and took of the spirit that was upon him, and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit, here's God coming down again to Moses, a man of God chosen by God to do right. God came down with Sodom and Gomorrah, but he didn't go to Sodom and Gomorrah. He came to Abraham, a man chosen by God, and spoke and talked and had a friendship with. Uh, Abraham. Moses, God said, there is no other prophet like unto Moses. I will speak mouth to mouth with that man. Psalm good morning. He sends two angels into the city. Go in there and go do it. The Tower of Babel. Like I said, according to what we're reading right now, probably the angel of the Lord went down. As the angel of the Lord showed up to Hagar, Genesis 16, 11, a woman on the run, as the Lord, angel of the Lord showed up to Manoah and his wife about the, the birth of Samson. One more place in Numbers, chapter 12, verse 5. Chapter 12, verse 5. And the Lord came down in the pillar of a cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron, Miriam, and they both came forth. There's God coming down, but he's talking to, he's angry with two of them there. But there's Moses. Now, why would this would happen? Look at Genesis 6.12. Genesis 6.12. 6.12. This is what God has to say about man. And God looked upon the earth. Behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh has corrupted his way upon the earth. Did God have to come down and see that? No, he already saw it. He said, you're corrupt. You're wicked. Your imaginations are wicked. 
How did he know that? Verse 2, the sons of God saw the daughters of the men, and they were fair, and they took them to be wives, and we know the rest of the story. We know those are the angels of Satan. How would God get the report that this is going on? They're going back and forth between heaven and all that. I say, hey, check these women out down there. You see that big giant down there? That's my son. Satan goes up before God, Job 1 and 2. And I've been walking up and down the earth and through the earth and around the earth and everything up the earth and telling God what's going on. We see the angels showing up and telling God. Chapter 8, verse 21, Genesis. Genesis 8, 21. Is what God has to say about man. And the Lord smell a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, that's God's heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite and more smite any more every living thing as I have done. I know that man is wicked. God knows that. God knows all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God knows there is none righteous, no, not one. He knows that. He knows in the best state of man, he's wicked. Man has a free will. And in that free will, God forces nobody. God will not make you do anything. Uh, we're going to run through the New Testament scriptures, uh, five or six of them. John seven seventeen. They're, they're in the book order. John seven seventeen. This is about the free will that man has, and yet God knows in the free will what we're going to do with our free will. John seven seventeen. Now, some have a problem with Calvinism, and they're wrong. Calvinism is wrong. In John 7, 17, if. See that if? That blows away all Calvinism doctrine. You cannot have the word if and believe that God's already predestined anybody to do anything. Because if is a free will word. If any man. Did we see God knows all men? If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God, whether I speak of myself. He said, listen, if you do, if you will do right, the option there of free will is you may not do or you may do. That's the option of free will. John 1, 12. John 1, 12. It says, but as many as received him. So you see the option there? It doesn't say all that will receive him, but as many will receive them. Salvation is what you will do with Jesus Christ. Will you receive him or will you not receive him? John the Baptist says in John 3, 36, if you believe on Jesus, you have eternal life. If you do not believe, you'll get the wrath of God. Salvation is not forced upon you. And yet God already knows what we will do. And he'll use that knowledge. Matthew seven seventeen. I watch Jesus here put the free will. Matthew seven seventeen. Thirteen, excuse me, seven thirteen. Watch the free will. Enter ye at the straight gate. That's a commandment. That's God saying, you better go through the straight gate. For wide is the gate that and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. 
and many there be which go therein. Go through that straight gate. The warning is, many will not. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. You see the free will? You can go through the broad way, or you can go through the straight gate. But the commandment is, go through the straight gate. But there will be people who won't do it. And there will be people who will do it. Now, let's see. one more place. Deuteronomy 13, 14. Deuteronomy 13, 14. Why did God send the angels into Sodom? Why did God send the angel of the Lord, or whoever he sent, into with the Babel, the tower, and all that. If God knows everything, why did he have to go? Couldn't he see it from heaven? Yes, he could. Had not the cry of Son gone up to God? Yes, it did. So why did God do it? Deuteronomy 13, 14. This is what men don't do. Then shalt thou inquire. God inquired of Sodom. God inquired of that tower. And make search. Sending two men into Sodom. We're sending the angel of the Lord or whoever he sent into that tower. And ask diligently. Those angels talked back and forth. They had a conversation with Lot. They dealt with the people. I guarantee you, whoever went to that tower in that city went amongst the building. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, when did you start this? Whose idea was this? What's the purpose of this place? God already knows it. And behold, if it be truth, and the thing certain, that such abomination is brought among you. You know what God's doing? He's doing what happens in every courtroom. He's got one side pleading, he's got the other side pleading, and the evidence, the evidence are being brought forth before the judge. God is not going to judge that tower, Babel. God is not going to judge Sodom and Gomorrah until he is sure, he's inquired, he's made the search, he's asked the questions, it has been proved, though he knows it, before he casts his judgment. It is rightfully and a holy and righteous God and holy and righteous judge that I'm going to make sure before I say guilty or innocent, I'm going to wait all the evidence out. There's nothing else. If a judge stood in the courtroom and saw and witnessed, he still has to hear all the evidence. It has to be played out. Genesis chapter 3, we see man. We see death. We see a fruit. We see that they disobeyed God. But Genesis chapter 2, God told Adam, Thou shalt not eat of that, and I'm not quoting, quick, Thou shalt not eat of that fruit. For the day thou eatest it, thou shalt die. God, knowing the penalty of what that fruit can do for you. Yes, he knew. But he sent Adam out in that garden and he said, I'm just going to see what he does. I know what he's going to do. But the free will of Adam was that Eve took that fruit and Adam ate that fruit. God knew it. How do you know that God knew it? Because he says, from the very foundation of the world, I would send my son to die for Adam's race. But God knew what Adam would do. God knew what the condition would be. God saw the end from the beginning. The knowledge of God. Now this thing, the fact is that God doesn't know everything. You realize how much internet pages are spent. That God does not know nothing. 
God could not. And the illustrations of Sodom and Gomorrah, the illustrations of Babel, which came up when this topic was discussed, and the illustrations of that and Eve have been all brought up and has brought great skepticism. And has brought great disbelief and the ability of what God can do and what he can't do. And yet we saw scriptures that plainly spoke out that God knows exactly and God does know it all. That's the scriptures. 